Welcome to the Gabin and the Games. Uh, doing a real quick sound check, make sure you guys can hear me, and then we will get going. All right. God damn it. All right. How about that? How about that? Is it better? Better, better, better. We're also broadcasting live over on uh, the Twitch. I am on the Twitter and the Twitch, actually. I am still in my kid's room. I. It's a long story you don't want to hear. Let's just say that it's looking like it's a motherboard issue. And in that, I will be probably just having him build me a new computer. Uh, I'll be posting some specs to the Discord for members to see if it turns out uh, that I'm getting the right stuff, because I'm probably going to blazing graphics card and processor, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, we're over on the Twitch now, on the Twitter now, because they changed some of their policies. So welcome, all you folks over there that are watching on Twitch, or all two of you. We used to have a relatively big community on Twitch, but I haven't streamed there in a long time, but I figure why not? Hello, Jez Belly. Uh, uh, good, uh, good to see you, buddy. Good to see you again. Jez Belly was there with us Saturday, uh, for pot and popcorn, we did, we started watching the Godzilla monarch thing and, and, you know, that's a little high, but most people seem to agree that it was like, eh, it's all right. Uh, so we didn't even watch the second episode, but then we watched a movie called the burning moon, which was from like late nineties, early two thousands. And, um, Good God almighty, man. That thing was so bad and fun and stupid. And listen to this, fellas. Uh, I probably won't have time uh, to do it before Thanksgiving, but I was talking on Twitter yesterday to the director, the film director of Thanksgiving uh, and Thanksgiving 3. And he is willing to come on the show and talk about his movies and Thanksgiving uh specifically. So hopefully you'll join us for that. I just got to figure out uh, when we are going to broadcast. Speaking of Thanksgiving, two quick things before we jump into games. Will there be a Thanksgiving day special in the morning? Probably. We're going to do something. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. It really depends if I got my computer back, but we'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, e well, no, that's different. Uh, we'll talk about the Eli Roth thing in just a very quick second. By the way, there is a post-show discussion uh, that will be basically, here's how it's going to work. We're going to get through a bunch of the topics. Then we'll take like a two or three minute break. Um, and then after that, we will uh, bring on Cult Calypso members, mods, and hire in the Discord to talk about the Last of Us 2 remaster and a couple of other pieces of news that I want to get y'all's um, 
take on. So hopefully uh, you guys will stick around for that. And if you are uh, a cult, a mod, or a God of War, hopefully you'll join in and give us your thoughts. Um, Uncle Fuzz, let's go fuck yourself. He says, it's a good thing your name is in the corner in case I forgot who I'm watching. Let me explain something to you. I'm using this thing, stream, uh, what's called StreamYard. I, you know, I, I can change it if you like, if it really bothers you that much here. How about this pal? Let's, uh, let's, let's do this. Let's change it just for you. Okay. Let's, let's make, let's make you happy. Cause it's all about that. Um, well, I can't do it right now. I'll do it later. Anyway. Um, yeah, it is what it is. What am I going to be playing on Thanksgiving boss, man? Good to see boss, man. Um, I, I have so much to finish. My fantasy was that I was going to get into, uh, cyberpunk 2077 again and play the whole uh fucking thing but i still need to finish spider-man and Baldur's gate and alan wake and blah 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 um matt demarco says don't look at my instagram stories eli don't look at my ig stories roth shame i remember seeing the thanksgiving trailer at the double bill back in the day for grindhouse really hoped i would want to go see it if it was made well i did see it and I will tell you, oh, Juicent too. Yeah. I will tell you, um, you know, I saw it uh, this week. I saw it. The, in fact, we went uh, the night it opened. And uh, let me, let me, let me get my game screen up here one second. And uh, actually, we, I think we went on Thursday night, the kind of like semi sneak preview. It was not great. Um, it was not great. A lot of people, you know, I've, I've read some horror reviews from people and they seem to really like it. And that's great. But for me, I just found it incredibly underwhelming. I thought the killer was absolutely not. I was hoping we were going to get another Freddy or Jason or hell, even Jack Frost. We were going to get some kind of, um, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, just new, you know, force of nature killer out there in the slasher genre. It wasn't that it felt more like Scooby-Doo. Um, so, you know, it is what it is, but I didn't care for it. You know what I did care for? I watched it on HBO Max or Max or whatever. I did watch Blue Beetle. And uh, that's that's streaming now. It started streaming this Friday. And boy, that's a good movie. I know it kind of tanked at the box office and a lot of people have gone kind of south on the comic book films. But I'll tell you what, uh, it was nothing groundbreaking. It was nothing like it's the best fucking movie ever. But it was good. It was It was really entertaining and it moved fast and... Blue Beetle had some very Green Lantern esque powers, where the suit kind of makes him any weapon he can think of. So it's it's kind of fucking cool. I recommend that goddamn thing. Mm. Okay, now we're gonna talk games. I want to share some news. It's not shut up, Jezebelly. It's not woke Beetle. What's woke about it? There's not one goddamn thing in this movie that's woke about it. I'll tell you what. I mean. Even at the, well, I'm not going to spoil anything. Let's just say the end, what the blue beetle lets somebody do. I'm just like, that's weird, but no, nothing. Uh, yeah, I know. I mean, nice. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Listen, I want to tell you something before we get into uh, the first news story. Um, I just think this is so fucking weird. So I go to the doctor, I get a blood test. She says, look, man, she says, uh, you know, you know, come on with, with the being so fat. Um, she didn't say that. Uh, and she says to me, uh, what's up? Oh, that's it. Thanks buddy. And she says to me, um, you know, you do not have, uh, uh, diabetes, but you know, you're really close. You're really fucking close. Cause your mom had it. Your sister had it. And, uh, if you don't get it under control, you're going to end up with it. And she says, let me give you this. Let me, let me slide you this. And she slides me this Ozempic, which I'm sure you've heard of. And uh, it's for, people have been using it for weight loss, but it's for diabetes. Um, and it's very interesting because I took it for the first time last night. You take it every week. And what it, one of the things it does is it, is it fucks with the brain and tells the brain to kind of, you know, take your appetite and suppress it. Um, it's really fucking weird. Well, it's supposed to take three or four weeks to kick in, but some people online have said they can feel it almost right away. I felt it all day. And let me, uh, let me fucking tell you something about this goddamn thing. It is the weirdest. I never had COVID and I never, so I never had the thing where I lost my sense of taste and smell, 
but having waking up and your brain almost not being interested in food at all is a very weird experience for me to the point that I'm having to drink protein shakes and make sure I eat uh, simply because already in less than 24 hours, I'm just like, Oh, I'm not interested uh, uh, in the goddamn uh, food. So, you know, I'm cautious. And I says to her, I says, yeah, but it's kind of new medicine. And she says to me, she says, yeah. And uh, it's not that new if you're for diabetes, but it, if people just take it for weight loss, I said, so I don't, you know, I'd like it to be more tested because I don't want anything bad to happen. And she says, well, okay, you just got to weigh if you don't want that to happen or you don't get diabetes because you can't, you're not doing the work to get rid of the weight. I'm like, yeah. So I'm digging it so far though. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Jess Belly says it uh, kicks like a 12 gauge. Um, I thought you had COVID once from your son. I thought he did get it. I thought I got it, but we did not. We did not. Um, I checked that. Bushwick Bill says, was it the placebo effect? I, 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 It would absolutely not surprise me if it was the placebo effect. But that's why I looked it up online. I'm like, this can't be working already. And what they said is the diabetic part of it doesn't start working um, for about two or three weeks, but the appetite suppressant can start working within days. And some people online were like, oh yeah, it started right away. So anyway, I wanted to share that. Interesting. See what happens. I'll be like the incredible shrinking man or not. Uh, okay. Let's move forward. Hey, somebody's asking real quick about the Malaysia flight. Um, Somebody, I, I saw this online. It, it, it's like they're saying there, there's like a video going around right now. I know this isn't games, but uh, who is it? Mascus says, Jaffe, have you seen the Malaysia flight teleportation footage? I just found out about it and I'm mind blown. I, my guess is it's horseshit, but I think it's like it, 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 it's like the plane is flying and then you see this burst of light and then it just disappears. But I mean, that could be so incredibly easily faked that I'm just not kind of inclined to believe it. But hey, man, you never fucking know. You never fucking know as it relates to uh, all this UAP shit going along and all that shit. But we'll see. We'll see. If you're really interested in this shit, uh, there's a great book I just read called The Little Book of Aliens. It's brand new. It just came out. And it's written by a uh, astrobiologist. And his whole thing is... Uh, you know, look, I don't know what the UAPs are. I kind of don't care. I don't believe that aliens could create the kind of tech we need and to, to travel, you know, you know, in our own solar system, let alone, you know, from exoplanets. So he's kind of like, uh, you know, he's more focused on using James Webb and Hubble and all that stuff to actually tell if there is alien life on other planets, mostly outside of our solar system. So it's real. If you're into this kind of shit, uh, it's, it's quite cool. It's quite, quite cool. Um, I highly recommend, uh, that book. Jezbelly says astrobiology sounds woke. Jezbelly, you go to hell, uh, because astrobiology is a real science and, uh, it's, it's absolutely fascinating stuff. All right, let's get to games. My little friends, uh, heads up. Suicide Squad, if you're interested, it's coming out in a couple of months. The latest trailer looked quality regarding production value, as you would expect from Rocksteady. Eh, I'm not all that interested in it, but I did sign up for the network test, alpha, beta, whatever the fuck they want to call it. You can go over to Warner Brothers as well uh, and sign up for the game if you want to play it. I think it's November 30th through uh, December 4th. And there's no guarantee you'll get in, but if you're into such malarkey and I want to play, I mean, I, I definitely want to play it for free. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not all that interested, although the trailer looked like there were moments of fun, but, uh, you know, give it, give it a shot, give it, give it a shot. Um, well, again, you know, Captain Crunch is vomiting. Bill Bone says, eh, you don't have to pay for it. It's just sign up for the fucking beta and see if your if your uh, ability to judge a game based simply on the trailer uh, is is firing on all cylinders. That's all I'm fucking saying. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying go buy the fucking thing. It may be terrible. Probably will. It won't be terrible, but it'll probably be you know a, a totally forgettable experience as it seems like it will be. But you know if you're interested in playing a free fucking game, sign up. You might get lucky. All right. Listen to this. Listen to this. Um, 
Oh my God. Crushed ice and orange juice, baby. Mm. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, you guys are such dicks. Uh, double R. Meh. My time is money. A cab says it will be boring a bowl. Eric Kennel says hard pass. Well, then don't fucking play it. I don't care. I'm just bringing it to your attention. You never fucking know. Tones McKee says, or Tones Mick says, it'll be better at least than Gotham Knights, which was okay. Right. Right. 100%. Um, Eric says, my little, you know, smart comment here. We're getting some intelligent comments. Eric says, my hope is they can make the missions to have a more curated, handcrafted feel and not just kill everything, collect loot, and like looter shooters are. 100%. Fucking 100%, man. Absolutely. Uh, hello, DJ uh, Dal. Everything's great. Good to see you, buddy. Um, Jaffe, I'd rather buy it so I can complain, says Death Proof, about the microtransactions and cry on YouTube comments. That's fair. That's fair. Fupy says, a game being free doesn't mean there's suddenly a reason to play it. Ga Garbo alert. I don't know what Garbo is. Uh, but I didn't say there's a reason. I, lo I love design. I love the business of video games. Fellas, I'm fascinated by this game. And if you're like me, which you should be, and you should want to be, you should be fascinated too. Not because the game looks amazing, but because here you have, seriously, I want you to think about this for a minute. Here you have one of the premier developers of action games, which is the Rocksteady folks, right? And now they are running smack dab into the uh, capitalist, Dick obsessed swine bots. I don't know of Warner brothers interactive. And I'm fascinated to know if like, can they survive that collision? Can they still be rock steady? Can they still give us what we love about them while having to fucking deal with all of this horse shit? I'm, I'm very intrigued uh, by, by this concept. If you're not, that's fine. Whatever. Okay. Um, I'm still angry. They wasted eight years of rock state development on this. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. Uh, okay. Let's move forward though. Yeah. Assassin's Creed, uh, Nexus VR apparently is quite good on MetaQuest three. I have not played it. It is a full featured Assassin's Creed game. It is long. It is open world. People seem to suggest who have played it. I have not, cause I have not got a MetaQuest three yet that the, this is a pretty good deal. It's a pretty good game. But today, though, Ubisoft became the first video game company, if you don't count Apple, I guess, or sort of, uh, to say, yeah, we're going to pull our ads from X or Twitter as well. Um, I don't know if that's going to create, especially as we head into the holidays, any kind of really uh, uh, stampede of people like Sony and Microsoft doing the same thing. A lot of people are upset with uh, the Elon Musk, and they don't want to be on his platform anymore. But I thought that was interesting, especially as it relates to uh, are we going to see anyone else in the industry following suit? Are we going to see Sony stepping up and saying, yeah, we don't want to be part of this shit uh, either. It's kind of kind of bad, but I don't want to get into politics with you. We can talk about that later. Good to see you, Prince Cream. Good to see you, Mutant Moe. He says, thanks for streaming. Super stressed. Why are you stressed? Oh, running errands. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, Linda. Uh, I love running errands on the holidays. I love the crowds. I love the music. I love the decorations. I am very, very excited to kick off the Christmas season, probably with you folks on uh, Thanksgiving morning before we head out and celebrate in the afternoon. Okay. Um, all right. Look at this. Look at this. This is interesting, man. I'll tell you, they, they, they just can't, I'd say Xbox can't catch a break. You don't catch breaks in NFL football, which is what this is. No, it's not. Shh. Uh, you make your own fucking breaks. Listen to this. Hellblade 2, Matt Booty has pretty much said, um, yeah, that's a year out. Uh, he says that's coming uh, 2024, right? End second half 2024. So now you're dealing uh, with uh, their big game right now hitting over a year. And he says he, he continues in this article, in this interview to explain, hey, but like we said, we got the cadence, baby. We did Forza and then we did Starfield and we're going to, we're really pushing to release three to four big games every year from internal uh, studios, right? 
Uh, what about Suna? Isn't that what I'm, did I say, did I not say Suna? Whatever the fuck. Yeah. Suna saga, Hellblade two. That is uh, coming. He said in 2024. Um, but th the funny part is then he goes on to say, but don't worry, look what's coming out. Um, at the beginning of the year. And he goes on to cite these two games. Uh, Aura era history untold could be brilliant, but come on. Don't fucking show me this thing and make it make me make me feel like I'm supposed to go. Whoa, that's fucking awesome. Who the f it's just a fucking city builder, city builder, Civ, whatever. I don't give a shit. Um, I mean, maybe you do, but this is not going to, you know, uh, calm the masses who want more shit on their fucking Xbox from first party. And then they say, OK, well, if you don't like that, don't worry, pal. Uh, we got this. Uh, what's this fucking thing called? Towerborn. Again, I've heard people who play it say it's really cool, really interesting, good pedigree of a team. But this, this again, this is just looks like some third-party Game Pass game. Um, again, it is what it is. It is what it is. And I still love my Xbox. But guys, this ain't going to do it. Now, I imagine what they're probably doing is going through the Activision catalog and at least going, could we, could we fucking, you know, put out some shit? Um, you know, uh, from you guys, even in Diablo four, something just to at least make people feel like this is a pretty sexy machine to own. Um, fable is coming PK 99. Yes. Um, and as is, uh, what's the other one, the other, uh, first person RPG it's supposed to be out this year. Um, what is that game called avowed? But the fact that it wasn't even mentioned in this article where he's trying to kind of, you know, comfort everybody for saying, hey, this game is, is basically delayed or I'm going to give you a, a, another time that is end of 2024. I'm going to make it a little more specific for you. That alone uh, is enough to go, well, if you're not going to mention Avowed or Fable in there, it's probably not coming this year. No, that's me. I don't know anything. I'm just saying, don't you think, wouldn't you have mentioned it as well? Uh, instead of mentioning Towerborn, um, Stalker 2 is coming to Game Pass. Uh, Captain Crunch says, yeah, but they haven't even said that. I know, I know it was at Gamescom and people played it and said it was really hardcore, but it was good. Um, but I'll tell you, Come on, fellas. What are you doing? What are you doing? Matt Booty, take a hike, baby. Take a hike. Isn't that terrible to say? I don't know, Matt Booty. Maybe he's brilliant. Um, all right, but that's what it is. And as somebody said, we'll get to the sales figures in just a minute on Xbox because they are, at least in Europe, and if Europe is indicative of what's going to be happening at Christmas in America and all over the world, holy shit. Uh, but let's keep rolling. This is interesting. This is fascinating, actually. Uh, Sony fails to kill $7.9 billion lawsuit over PlayStation store prices. Let me tell you what this is. Um, so it's similar to the lawsuit uh, about Fortnite only being able to be uh, no longer being on the iPhone. So Apple sues Epic, blah, blah, blah. And so somebody sued Sony and said, look, motherfuckers, uh, you are doing anti-competitive horseshit because you are selling your games digitally for PlayStation only on PlayStation. And you're also taking a 30% cut off the top and not passing the savings on to the consumer. And they're basically saying this isn't right. And you should be able to have anybody sell pretty much whatever they want on your hardware. So, GameStop should be able to have a digital store and compete in price with you on your own hardware. Now, this is so, uh, this is so different from what I'm, uh, used to, right. That what we're all used to, that it would never occur to me to make this claim. But the fact that in America, uh, I believe Apple one, right? Apple pretty much, I know they're appealing it. Um, but I think in America, Epic, oh, is Google, Epic versus Google and Epic versus Apple. Uh, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that American court said, no, yeah, you're, you're anti-competitive. You have to put Fortnite on the iPhone again. 
Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, fellas, because I know some of you followed this more than I did. Uh, but now they're kind of saying the same thing about console games. Can you imagine? I mean, seriously, what, what somebody's asking, what do I think about this? Um, I mean, as a gamer, I think it's great. I would love to be able to turn on, because uh, th here, here's what they uh, said it was similar to. They said, if you turn on your PC and you can only access Valve uh, to buy games, but you can't go to good old games or the Epic Games Store, or if you have a Mac, you can't, or Windows Store, any of that. They're like, that's, the, that's basically what it is. Um, I mean, I think it would be fucking great. Then you could get Game Pass on PlayStation right? Which is probably what Microsoft wants anyway. Then you could get um, uh, GameStop or Target or whoever on PlayStation and suddenly you want God of War for $79.99? Okay, cool, but GameSpot Stop is selling it for $59.99. I mean, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And the fact that these motherfuckers got in America, which is much harder to get this kind of shit through, where Europe is much more consumer friendly, especially lately when it comes to digital stuff, this could happen. This could fucking happen. Can you, can you imagine, can you imagine what would happen if we could do that? I, I never imagined this cause it's just not what is normal for me, but boy, that would be cool. Boy, that would be cool. I mean, it wouldn't just happen to, it wouldn't just happen to Sony. I mean, I'm assuming if Sony has to do this, so does Nintendo. Uh, so does Xbox, which is great. I mean, consoles are going away anyway, but you know that. Come on now. You deny it. You deny it, but you know it. Mm. All right. Tones Mick says, I would love Game Pass on my PS5 so I could sell my Series X. Fuck yeah. Listen, you guys saw the numbers? I'll, I'll, I'll jump to that now because it's relevant to what we're talking about. The numbers in, um, check it out. Shinobi says, hey, uh, on Twitter, this is just Europe. 143% PlayStation 5 up year on year. Pretty good. Amazing. Switch sales down 20%. Yeah, that's that's expected. I mean, it's it's old hardware. And everybody who wants one probably has one. Xbox Series XS is down 52%. Now, I know Microsoft says we're not about the numbers in console. And I get that uh, because Game Pass is trying to be in a lot of places. And I think that's great. But if you don't have any real compelling games on Game Pass that are exclusive, and, it, and, and listening to Matt Booty earlier today, starting to worry that that may be the case, I get, I mean, even though I love my Xbox, and I love my Xbox Series X, I enjoy because of Game Pass more than my PS5. But that said, though, I mean, you know, it's clear what people are buying. So that's a hell of a drop, man. Uh, that is an absolute hell of a drop. People are asking what I like immortals to come to game pass. Well, they said uh, the, the guys who made it were quoted yesterday uh, saying that, um, you know, we we're in talks and we want it to come to game pass and PlayStation plus uh, I was thinking about getting it on black Friday, but now that it's pretty much a done deal, fuck. Yeah. It seems like a great, everyone who's played it says really good. Um, Brett Williams says, I said a few years ago, Xbox was on their way to third party publisher and I got laughed at. Uh, I, well, I think they're all on the way to third party publisher, but, but I mean, I don't even want, why, why I don't want to get, I mean, I don't have, okay. You're probably, you, you it wouldn't surprise me, Brett. The point is I don't want to really get into it. Cause I don't know when people get upset when we talk about this shit, but honestly, Xbox has Game Pass. That's the only reason they're relevant to me. Now I know I'm just me. I like Halo Infinite. I like I love Starfield. Um, but I I don't I don't. It's not like oh wow third party. Oh when's the next Forza coming out? I don't give a shit. Um, I don't give a shit. So I I don't think they're a, a, a third party publisher makes sense if they're making great software. But no one's raving about their fucking software for the most part. Um, the average European gamer is richer than Americans, uh, says Fupi. Um, okay. Our own God of War, Eddie Torres, says at some point, higher ups and Microsoft are going to get frustrated with the fact that hardware doesn't sell. Despite what Phil Spencer apologists tell you online, Xbox is not relevant anymore. It's going to turn into a streaming service within the next five years, says Eddie. Hey, I, I great. 
absolutely great. Speaking of, let me see, you know, I'll, I'll go back to these stories in just a second, but I, I speaking of, um, you guys have to have seen this obviously, uh, black Friday is coming up. Uh, I get all excited about this stuff and I'm like, Hey, what am I, what do I want to buy? Right. Um, and so I was looking at some of this stuff. I, I really need some new TVs in the house. So I'm probably going to get a new uh, television. But as I'm looking at televisions, um, I saw the news that Game Pass and now, um, uh, what is that fucking thing? Game Pass and now uh, the NVIDIA Geoforce are now part of uh, Samsung's Samsung Gaming Hub. And all of their TVs going forward is in some from 2020 now uh, support this. And so I get that you guys are like consoles will never go away. Eh, I don't believe you. Uh, you know, I think you're going to end up having collectors and stuff. Sure. But ultimately we're going to get here. I, I don't want to get into that either. Cause I've, I've talked about it ad nauseum. You either believe me or you don't, but I, I think this Christmas, this black Friday is when I'm going to pick up my first gaming tv because i have very good uh internet um and i'll also have this plugged into the ethernet because we have an ethernet port out there and just the idea that i can turn on the goddamn tv and i can i don't need anything but a controller and i'm off to the fucking races i'm excited for this i'll let you guys know um uh you know uh if i dig it if i like it and if it's worth it but i i'm excited for this very very excited for this Buzzy Buzz Buzz says, Jaffe, when was the last time you were right about anything? I'm right about almost everything. The difference is, um, I mean, I, I'm wrong at times. Uh, I'm absolutely wrong about things, sure, just like everybody else. But the idea that because I say something you don't like and hasn't come to pass yet, I mean, that just means that you have no vision, sir. But it is coming. I said the same thing as a lot of people did. It's nothing that I'm brilliant about, but I said the same thing about digital. And everyone's like, oh, Jaffe, no. No, Jeff, no, everybody likes to own their games. I like to go into the store. Yeah, fuck you. You're wrong. You were wrong, and now it has come to pass. Pass. And a cab, I am wrong. He says, Jaffe's never wrong, according to Jaffe. I'm wrong a lot. About these sorts of things, I'm sorry, I'm not. You can you can cling to the past if you want to, sir, but this is the future, man. This is this is sort of where we're going. Get on board or don't. What do I care? Um, Vinny C says Game Pass alone is reason enough for me to get an Xbox. There are no game subscription service that allows you to play one day day one games throughout the year. Vinny C, I'm with you. I love Game Pass. I think it is transformative. Uh, but you got to have the fucking games. And I know they've bought all these studios, but come on, man. Let's fucking, uh, let's pick up the pace. Pick up the goddamn pace. Um, all right. Eric is saying he plays uh, Game Pass on his TV, direct stream to the TV. He loves it. I'm telling you, man, this is where we're going. This is where we're going. Uh, speaking of, this is what I'm thinking. Tell me what you think of this plan. So Prince Purge is coming out. Avatar... I'm not a, did I say Gamefly? I meant Game Pass. Um, Avatar is coming out. People who've played it say it's pretty good. I would never buy it. Um, I want to noodle around with Mith 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 Mirage. And of course, uh, the Crew Motor Fest is one of my favorite games of the year. So I'm, and then Prince Purge is coming soon too. I'm pretty close to saying uh, I'll probably be pulling the trigger for one month of Ubisoft Plus. I don't know how they can do this. I get how Microsoft is like, look, we're a loss leader. This is the value, blah, blah, blah. But if you're Ubisoft, I, you know, I've, I've, I, why would you go out and spend 60 bucks on Avatar and 50 bucks on Mirage um, when you can play it, finish it, get all you want of it? So instead of Black Friday, where I was going to pick up Mirage and the crew, I might wait. Uh, and similarly, I was going to pick up um, uh, Immortals uh, of Avium. But now that I'm hearing it's coming to Game Pass and PS Plus, fuck it. I'll just, uh, I'll just get it there. Um, Brett Moore says he's excited for Prince of Persia. I am too. Everybody who's played it said it was quite good uh, at various shows and such. Um, I think you're wrong about Sony having to adapt to Game Pass and put their games day one on the services, Jay Rich. Yeah, I, I could be. Here, here's something I was wrong about. People, I, I, I'm absolutely wrong about a number of things, but I'm more right than I'm wrong, but whatever. I don't care. Uh, it's just opinion anyway. How do I know? I don't know about Crystal Ball, but I was wrong about... Uh, 
I, I was thinking iPhone and iPads was going to totally destroy the console uh, uh, world because it's so much easier. And, and, and to be fair, mobile gaming has absolutely overtaken by multiples of X. I don't know what it is, but it's significant. Uh, the console space in terms of money. But I was wrong that there are still people who actually want their uh, consoles. So um, I can be wrong, absolutely. But I don't think in this case I am. Uh, awesome Tatum says Immortals of Avium was cool, but I would wait for Game Pass. I probably will uh, wait for Game Pass as well. So now I just got to figure out. I'll probably just, you know, I don't, I, I'm don't. i building a new computer. That's what I'll buy on Black Friday. I'll buy all the parts. Hmm. It's a good question, a cab. Whatever happened to the Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake? Um, well, the remake, I think, is pretty much dead. Um, but this new one, the 2.5D one, is very much alive, and people say it's great, and I'm very excited for it. So we'll give it uh we'll give it a play, we'll see what happens. Um, all right, let's go back to the uh the news uh that we were gonna talk about. Listen to this, I don't believe it. I don't believe this at all. I'm drinking orange juice and crushed ice, baby. I don't believe this at all, man. I haven't played it, though. I own it. I haven't played it except the beta. Uh, Activision's tweeting out that the campaign players are putting more time into Modern Warfare 3 than the previous two installments. I have a hard time believing that, given how much people say it's terrible. Not just reviewers, but people out in the goddamn world. Modern uh, uh, Modern Warfare Z is the most engaging third mode in Modern Warfare history, the zombie mode. That, I believe, I heard it's quite good. More hours per player overall than Modern Warfare 2019 and Modern Warfare 2. I just, I don't know. I don't buy it. Usually when it's stuff like this, they give you some numbers, right? They say, oh, this is how many people came in this weekend, blah, 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 blah. But hey, you know, I have it. I will play it. I will absolutely play the multiplayer Understanding three in the chat says he finished the campaign. It was decent. So that's more than I've heard. That's one of the few good things I've heard about it. Um, and Lutron says zombies is dope. So yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, I will be playing the multiplayer. I'll probably be playing that over the holidays, uh, some multiplayer stuff. So if you guys are around me, we'll get to play. Mega Davo drops a super chat. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate the ducats. I'm going to use it to go buy a picture of your mom, put it above my bed. Uh, then I'll have, uh, a buck 99 left over Xbox is trash, buddy. He says, mega Devo. I'm a goddamn grown ass man. You think I talk about consoles that way? Xbox is not trash. Uh, Xbox is some of their management is trash. Yep. Some of their games are shit, but you know, no, it's not trash. It's quite good. It's a, it's a good system. I've enjoyed it. Um, what are you five? Jesus Christ, man. Um, but thank you for the money. Jaffe, I'm level 55 in Call of Duty 3. I'm having a blast. All right, cool, Alex. I'll give it a play. Um, is that bad or is it petty reviews because COD is owned by Microsoft? PK says, I don't, I don't believe you. This idea. I'm going to put this on because I don't want to miss this one. I'll come back to it. Um, I don't believe you. Why didn't that show up? Show. Because this idea that there is a, uh, a tax, a game pass Xbox tax guys. I worked for 20 plus years in the industry. I had game of the year games and I had towards the end of my career, some of the worst reviewed games you can imagine. Do you think if any of these companies could buy reviews or could buy the allegiance of a, uh, uh, a, a big site, not these shit fly by night sites, but a big fucking site. Do you think Sony wouldn't have done it? You think Xbox wouldn't have done it? Um, they do. They probably would do it and do it when they can. Um, so this idea that they gave this a bad review because now it's owned by Xbox. That's just so dumb. Like you have no facts. You have no evidence of that. Um, you know, they basically, in fact, like uh, Reform Pervert, I'm glad you made it through the process, buddy. He says, it's not true. Since Microsoft 3 is basically DLC piggybacking, they're likely combining the hours in Modern Warfare 2 and 3. You're talking about what Call of Duty is claiming. Right. 
But I think because if you actually listen to the developers talk about um, this game, it makes sense why the reviews are so low. Because they said, they said, look, we spent, uh, we had 18 months to do it. For the majority of time, we did not know it was going to be a premium product. And so we made decisions assuming it was DLC. And we found out very late in the game that it was a premium product and the design for the single player had to change. Um, and then we ended up having to work nights and weekends and we only had 18 months. Um, that is a much more logical, probable scenario as to why this game uh, got poor reviews than, yeah, they, they, they don't like Xbox. Come on, man. Come on. I mean, look, weirder things have happened, but if you want to make a claim like that and you want to show up um, without any evidence, I mean, that's a you problem, baby. Uh, Bad Robo says, you worked in the industry for 20 years. Your best game this year is Starfield. I never said my best game is Starfield. You're, you need, I want you to submit yourself for drug testing and listening comprehension skills this coming Monday, uh, Bad Robo. What I said was, it was my personal favorite single player game that I have played. I did not say it is the best game of the year, but you know, um, also says zero signal. If any company could buy reviews, wouldn't it be the $2 trillion company? Of course, I'm not saying these companies wouldn't do it if they could. Are you kidding? They would fucking kill their mothers and rape the dead bodies if they could, if it would get them ahead. I'm not saying any of them are good, but to act as if, you know, they're doing it because it is illegal. They will get slammed by the FTC and fine. Like Microsoft did in the past. You have no evidence of it. Don't wink at me, bad robo. That makes me feel funny and happy and disturbed in the nether regions. I don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Well, nothing's out of the realm of possibility, uh, th the arcade, that they would do it if since they're totally dismissing Hogwarts. Uh, what is the Metacritic on Hogwarts? Can somebody check? Let, let's see. Let's. I, I want to find out. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, because... You know, I know some people are saying, and I'm sure you're right in some cases, that people didn't even want to review it or or give it a nomination because the J.K. Rowling stuff. But, I mean, this is a lower Metacritic than Starfield. So, you know, I mean, what do you, you know, it, I'm not saying that's everything. I'm not saying Metacritic it means it's good or bad. But if you're comparing it to Starfield or if you're comparing it to Call of Duty. I mean, let's see what the Call of Duty. Uh, I want uh, Modern Warfare three. Let's see where that's sitting. That's uh, the new one. Got is it Modern Warfare three? That's what it's called, right? It's fucking names. Here we go. Wow, that's at a fifty six, baby. Come on now. Come on now. Um, it's a clear. Oh, it is not, Eric. It's a clear boycott from the industry. You're just living in a fantasy, man. You're living in, did you know that? Maybe you know that and you don't care. Maybe you know that and you're just being a troll. I appreciate that. A good troll is hard to find. I appreciate what you're saying um, as a piece of entertainment, but come on, man. You can't possibly believe the shit that's coming out of your goddamn cock a mouth. Can you? Can you? Hmm. Listen. Listen. Harry Kruger, who's... Uh, the uh, was the director of the phenomenal, phenomenal Returnal, which I still haven't finished because too goddamn hard for me. Um, Eric says you should debate this with Sacred Symbols because they disagree. I'll be on Sacred Symbols or I'll be on Constellations this Friday, so uh, I'll bring it up maybe. If that, I've got to figure out what my topic is anyway. Harry Kruger walks away. He's been there for fourteen fucking years. Um. He hasn't really said why it could mean nothing, but you know, there's a lot of people leaving Sony and we have yet to hear what their future plans are now that lion crying scrambled eggs frying wouldn't fuck him. If I was dying, Jim Ryan is leaving. We don't know what the plans are. Did the, did the people who love games as a service win? Is it going to be a healthy balance? 
Is it going to be back to, you know, only cinema? Who the fuck knows? I don't fucking know, but he's leaving. And uh, that's, that's unfortunate, but I hope he go, he didn't get fired for God's sake. So I'm sure he's got a plan, even if it's to uh, retire. Yeah, no, I agree. Fupy says it seems like an amicable split. It's a Finnish company. They have manners and companies. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not saying he like got kicked out or anything, but I, I, I do wonder uh, what it was about, uh, th- th- you know, his life, if it was related to business and not like a personal thing that made him uh, uh, go, I need to move on to other pastures. Um, CW says, He's quoting me saying, I wouldn't fuck him if I was dying, Jim Ryan. What does that mean? It means if I was dying and a doctor came to me and said, if you fuck Jim Ryan, you will live. I would not do it is what I'm saying. Carlos Hernandez has been a member. Thank you, buddy. You know, I appreciate it. 27 goddamn months. 27 goddamn months. Thank you, sir. He says, look. It was really funny the Xbox tax disappeared when Hi-Fi Rush came out and came back when Starfield wasn't in one award show. I know. It's so dumb, Carlos. I just it, it, you know, I here here here's my here, let me here's my evolution when it comes to fanboys. They used to bother me because I couldn't tell when they were serious or not. And so I would take the bait uh a lot of times. Then I got to the point where I said, oh, most of them are trolls and the ones that aren't, what's the point? The people who come to the show who are normal, human, healthy beings don't want to hear me get into it, so fuck it. But I have now come to a point when it comes to these kind of people uh, where I'm so staggeringly fascinated that they are upright and breathing and they last longer than a couple of months out of their mama's vagina. Right. So now it's not so much that I'm taking the bait. I'm just like, how can you be here? How can you live on this planet and be able to go feed yourself and bathe yourself and dress yourself? And you are so dumb when it comes to shit about uh, the way the world works when it retains to capitalism and business. You have no proof of what you're saying. You're just saying shit. You're just saying shit. Now, do I think it's possible? Sure. But that's on you to show up with some facts. Go, go, go find. Let me tell you something, Linda. If you believe it, and a lot of people believe it, there's got to be one journalist out there that's worth their salt enough to go find us some evidence, right? Hell, I'll do a Kickstarter with you guys. Let's raise the money and hire a private detective. It's like we will pay you for two months to go find evidence that this Xbox tax is real. How about that? I'll throw in 20 bucks. Everybody throw in 20 bucks. I'll look up some uh, investigators. We'll see what happens. Otherwise, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know what I told him? I told him to shut the fuck up. Hey, Zan Moff. Good to see you as always. Good, sir. How go the comic books? I like Zan Moff's comic books. They remind me very much of like, uh, uh, what is it called? 2000 AD. They're very much like 80s Brit. Uh, uh, kind of action judge dready. I'm a fan. So I hope they're going well for you, sir. Um, I have an original Zan Moff piece of comic art, a sweet tooth in the other, uh, other room, actually. I'll show it to you guys, uh, soon. Oh, good. I'm glad you're getting back to it, Zan Moff. Okay. Let us move on. Shall we listen to this? This is for the people who love PlayStation and hate PlayStation. <laughs> So I, I don't know why I'm on the glass door mailing list, probably because if I want to see stuff, they, uh, they make you sign up. Um, <laughs> this is so great. So the glass door, uh, has PlayStation two new glass door reviews. Glass door, if you don't know, is the, is the online service that people who work at a company will sign up and say, I like it. I don't, here's how the interview went, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So on, on October, well, it's, uh, the most recent November 1st, the quote is, it's the most wonderful company to work for. Current employee recommends it, approves the CEO, positive outlook. He says, it's an incredible place to work, a wonderful team dynamic, fulfilling, rewarding work in great facilities. Cons? I don't have any cons. But then previously, the day before, uh, somebody wrote, executive management is going to kill this place. 
Uh, he was a former software developer. He doesn't recommend, doesn't improve the CEO, has a negative outlook on PlayStation. He says, pros, it used to be a great place, but with this moron in charge, it's going to be the downfall of PlayStation. Cons are awful management. Sony's cleaning house. Expect the PlayStation you know to change. So, you know, that way, if you love PlayStation, you can use this. And if you hate PlayStation, uh, you can use this. Isn't that fun? Look what I provide to you. Look what I give to you. Uh, full fucking service stream. You don't get this anywhere else. Uh, you, don't, you, you, don't, you don't get this anywhere else. Listen to this. I don't mean to bore you uh, with a story I've told before, but I love this story. Um, Donald Mustard, um, uh, who did, uh, uh the, the first time I ever heard of Donald Mustard and his brother, right? I was, uh, reading Game Fan Magazine in the grocery store. Game Fan, if you don't know, uh, I mean, th they never met a, a game they couldn't give a blowjob to. They were just anything and everything was the best thing ever, but, their layout was beautiful. They were passionate. It was a fun magazine. I enjoyed it very, very much. Um, and so I read about this game called Advent Rising, right? And they were they could not stop talking about the passion and intelligence uh, of Donald Mustard. It was just like, he's so smart and he's an encyclopedia of gaming and blah, 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 blah. And so I played Advent Rising. It wasn't the world's best game, but it had some brilliant ideas in it. And I called him when we were looking for the director who would go on to become Corey of God of War II. And we had dinner out in Utah where he lives. And I says to him, I says, hey, do you want to come direct God of War II? Um, and he's like, oh, well, we're doing this other thing right now. And he eventually just said no. But they went on to make the great shadow complex. They went on to make the huge iPhone hit uh, was infinity blade, which was basically, you know, uh, game of Thrones setting or Tolkien setting meets punch out. Uh, and then they got acquired by Epic. And once Cliff Blazinski left, Donald was the guy who came in and really oversaw the creative of Fortnite after it was a PVE and became sort of the, the, the mega dinosaur of just, I don't mean dinosaur like old, but like big fucking elephant in the room that it remains to today. So a, he made the right choice, right? Well, recently, this just last week it was announced. He's leaving Epic. Um, and he's going to team up with, uh, Anthony and Joe Russo, who I think are brilliant because I loved their Marvel movies and I love community, which they directed a lot of community, if not all of the episodes. Uh, but he's going to go over there and he's going to work with them on their game division. This is really interesting. Uh, it says he's listed as a partner. So I have to imagine he's got a hell of a lot of, I mean, he's already, he couldn't be richer than this guy. I mean, you could, but I, I have to imagine he's got a pretty good financial incentive to make this move. And um, the real tricky part though is you know, to his credit, he has run development teams. Well, I think his brother did the management, but he, I think, but he has, you know, he, it's not like his only experience is Fortnite and not building teams. I just, I just, I hope, cause I got dinged on it when I left Sony Santa Monica, Amy Hennig told me I would, and she was right. She's like, you can be as brilliant as you want, but if you don't have your team with you, you're useless. So hopefully Donald can go over there to, um, I guess it's called AGBO, uh, the Avengers guys, and still be able to do his magic. And they're going to give him the resources to build out a really good team. But this is pretty cool, man. This is pretty cool. Uh, Donald's, Donald's one of the good ones. He's a really good dude, really smart dude, passionate guy. Very, very fucking nice. So I'm, uh, I'm very much looking forward to this. I want to see uh, where this, where this goes and what they, uh, what they pump out. And I want to see, if uh, Fortnite stumbles or not, right? I mean, how much, I mean, either, that's a machine at this point. So one guy is not going to make a difference, but I'm curious if without Donald there, what is Fortnite? Do we notice a, 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 a misstep or not really? I don't know. CW is asking, he says, hey, was it game fan where the journalists had aliases? Yes, but there was a lot of those. EGM had aliases, Game Pro had aliases, and... Uh, uh, what, what's the other one? Uh, uh, 
game fan, diehard game fan did. Um, Tones McGee says Amy Hennig should have taken her own advice. Well, I mean, I don't think she left Naughty Dog of her own on her own steam. I think she would have probably loved to have been a you know uh, uh, a lifer at Naughty Dog because she knew what she had and she knew what she had worked well with what they had. But my understanding is it wasn't like she walked in one day and said, "Hey, you know what, fellas? I think I'm I'm ready to to head out." That was not, I don't. She was pretty much pushed out. I think I mean I think we all know that. We all, I mean, I know that, but I think that's common uh, knowledge. But anyway, Donald Mustard, congratulations, buddy. Um, that's exciting. Very, very exciting. Hello, Jerry A. Now, listen, I could not find, and hopefully I will, find the most wanted video games of the Christmas season. But I did find this. I'm always interested in this kind of stuff. Like, what do the kids want? What are the, what are the people who get gifts? Or the t- it didn't even have to be a kid. But what, what are people salivating for this holiday season this is what i want to know um all i can find so far though is um the esrb which puts on e3 or used to says um uh 72 percent of kids this christmas are asking for video game related stuff um video game gifts are followed by money gift cards clothes electronics tech items like phones and smartwatches. Fewer wish, fewer wish lists will include physical toys and games, tickets and experiences, arts and crafts, and books. There was a time not too long ago when wanting a phone or a smartwatch was way above traditional video games. Um, but 72% is ruling the roost right now. That's probably because there's a lot of good stuff out there and it's you know the, the height of the next generation. The majority of girls and boys, 60% say they plan to ask for games for the holidays. Um, they want, oh, listen to this though. The top five specific asks are game subscriptions, game consoles, game gear or accessories, in-game currency, and physical video games at 22%. Holy shit. So game subscriptions is number one. Meanwhile, one in three adults say they plan to buy game gifts for themselves or others this holiday, uh, with that number jumping 57% uh, for parents. Um, and that's something, and that's something that's pretty amazing. Ghetto God says my three teenage girls want clothes. Yeah. I'm not saying everybody wants this. Uh, dizzy death. Hey buddy, uh, says they already have smartphones. I guess I could see that. I could see a lot of people like, yeah, I'm done. You know what I really want? Um, but I don't want to spend the money on it. Are those, um, those Ray-Ban glasses from Facebook, the new ones that are the smart glasses that have audio AI built in and have, you can stream from them. Oh, I would take that. I would take that. But you know, I don't want I am spending too much money this Christmas already. Uh, Brett Williams says myself, the wife and both kids are all getting gaming stuff this Christmas. Brett Williams, what are you getting? And more importantly, tell me, does anybody know uh, what you like, what do you think the number one requested game is for like, you know, teenagers and up, not like little kids and shit. I wonder, is it, I mean, it's probably Call of Duty, like always. Spider-Man 2, possibly. Brent Moore says El Paso Elsewhere looks really cool. I do not recommend it. I I absolutely loved uh, the idea of it. And there's some really fucking cool uh, gameplay in there or or style in there. But it's super, super, super fucking uh, repetitive. Uh, Call of Duty is what kids want. Call of Duty says a cab as well. Uh, some people say Roblox, Brett Williams getting a PSVR 2. Uh, CW says, if my 13-year-old's any indication, it's Fortnite or Grand Theft Auto Online. I could see that. I could see that. All right, fellas, let's move on, though. We got a big holiday coming up. We already talked about Black Friday. I'm looking forward to that. We talked about this. Where are we going, folks? Listen to this. Hey, do we want to talk? Uh, 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 real quick. I just want to point this out. This is interesting. This is the top 20 games. We'll get off sales. Sales can kind of be kind of boring after a while, but I, I do want to point this out. Uh, top 20 games uh, for October. There's just some interesting stuff happening here. Um, the most interesting is, my God, everything is a sequel. Everything is a franchise. And I get it. That previous story about the 505 guys cutting 30% of their staff, one of the things he said, he says, look, 
gamers don't want new games. They don't want new IP. They want sequels and remakes. And he's like, I'm not saying that intellectually or from my heart. I'm saying that because that's what the numbers show, which is why we're laying off 30% of the goddamn workforce, right? Well, if you look at the chart just for October, boom, there you go. There you go. But listen to this. This is interesting. So Assassin's Creed Mirage comes in at three, which is quite surprising. I didn't expect it to come in that high, but it is less expensive than a $70, $60 game. Uh, Mortal Kombat 1 drops from two to six. I don't think that's going to have the staying power as Mortal Kombat 11 or whatever the last one was. I mean, I bought it. I never touch it anymore. And it's not that it's bad. Uh, it's really good. I'm just, I, I kind of got to the point where I'm, I'm kind of, finished you know i don't I, I don't have a desire to go back sonic superstars coming in at nine is not too bad for sonic that's pretty fucking good we'll see if it holds um metal gear master collection we'll see that out of the top 20 next next uh, month but that's pretty good for a collection look at starfield man look at starfield holy shit 14 down from drop 13 places it's probably why, you know, the Xbox stopped selling in October. If you look at those numbers that came out of Europe, it's like they they are in a wonderful position if they can make the hits, just like any other streaming service. If Disney Plus can keep putting stuff on it or Netflix or Max or Hulu, you're off to the fucking races. But if you don't have it month after month after month, then you've really painted yourself into a corner. And uh, given that they don't have it, uh, Forza Motorsport only came on at 17. Nobody wants to play that fucking game. I played it. I liked it. It was good, but I'd rather play the crew. Um, think about that. The crew motor fest was at seven. It dropped to 16, but it's still ahead of Forza Motorsport, which I know it's different. Crew is more like horizon, uh, Forza horizon. It's still above the new one. So I'm just saying it's kind of crazy. Uh, Uncle Fuzznet says Microsoft has to be pissed at the Starfield reception. I mean, I love it. I absolutely fucking love that game. And I can't wait to play it again. I, I have, uh, my office is in a shamble, so I moved my PS5 into the living room and I've been playing in there, but I, I didn't want to move my Xbox in there. But I'm really jonesing to get back to uh, some Starfield. I love that fucking game. Love that fucking game. But yeah, look at that, man. That's And then if you want to look at year to year, you think Avatar is going to kill it? I don't think so. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Uh, top game of the year, Spider-Man. Think about Spider-Man 2 comes in the first month, and it's already in the top five games of the entire fucking year. And that's something. Um, we'll see Call of Duty is going to be up there, of course. Uh, it'll be real interesting this year, given how a lot of people seem to be uh, beaten up on Call of Duty. Uh, we'll see if it can can get back to number one where it usually is. Uh, hello, Soak Play Seven. Uh, listen to this. Listen to this. Um, uh, Kyler Williams says, "Jaffe, we need new IPs on games and not sequels." Thoughts? Like, sure, a hundred percent. But I understand. Um, I, I'm not going to get look. My my stream is filled with what I'm. I, I'll give you the high concept, but you can find. Uh, detailed deep dives into this concept later. Um, so, um, new IP is everywhere in the double a and indie space. As soon as these game, and I get why game companies don't want to take the chance because they just don't know. So that's why I'm hoping they will start making smaller games to test out ideas at the triple a or sorry, at the double a and indie level Put those on like Game Pass day one, put those on PS Plus day one. And then if something really connects, then they kind of kick it up to the, the majors. That would be the best way to do it. Because short of that, even though I understand I want new IP as well, I get why people are scared to, to do it. You're talking over $200 million a lot of these games now. Um, Brett Williams says, let me guess, PlayStation bought a bunch of copies of Spider-Man to make Xbox look bad. I will tell you though, I don't know if you know this. Um, uh, but when the movie Jaws came out in 1975, uh, Spielberg and some of the producers and maybe the writer, Peter Benchley, went out and ordered a shit ton of copies of 
the novel Jaws because the novel came before the movie just to make sure it would be the number one selling novel the month that Jaws opened. So, you know, people have done it. People have absolutely uh, done that before. Um, all right, let's move on with our goddamn lives. Let's talk about Christmas Massacre. All right, hang on a second. Um, what's in this? If you don't know, uh, I'll play this while we're talking. Turn the volume off. Christmas Massacre came out last year on PC. Uh, I have it. I've played it. I'll talk about it in a second. Um, it is from Puppet Combo, super analog developer horror games. They're hit and miss. Some of their stuff is brilliant. Some of their stuff I don't really care for. I find it boring. But overall, I think they're a really neat company. Uh, this game, Christmas Massacre, is about a little kid in an orphanage. Um, and, uh, the nun in a, in a, in a, like nuns, they're nuns that run the orphanage and they're, they think he's an idiot and they make fun of him and everything. And so at the Christmas party one night, he goes in, um, and he murders everybody and he's wearing a little Santa Claus hat and all that stuff. And that, and that kicks off the, uh, kicks off the story. Um, and I, and first off, let's be clear. Uh, I've played it. I will be streaming it this week sometime. It is, it, 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 it's one of those games that because it is so analog and lo-fi, um, it, it's actually kind of disturbing. Um, it's, it's kind of disturbing. It's not like, oh my God, I, I had nightmares, but it's, 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 it works. It works probably better than any of their other games, in my opinion. Um, and so this came out Friday for PlayStation five, maybe four, but I was interested in this because I don't fully understand why Xbox said no. And, uh, uh, I kind of maybe sort of understand why switch said no, but Xbox says you can't play it. And when puppet combo was interviewed about it, they said, Oh, it's, it's too, it's too crazy was, was the quote. So Xbox hasn't actually given a quote uh, and steam hasn't given a quote, but what's weird about this to me is just the lack of uh, consistency, right? The lack of, I'll get to that one in a second, big Afro. Thanks buddy. Um, like Sony will allow this, but if you guys remember um, uh, two years ago, Martha is dead Sony required the developer to go in and cut out a mini game where you take a knife and you slice around the face of this dead person and then wear her skin. Xbox let you do it. PC let you do it. Sony said that's a bridge too far. This is okay. Christmas Massacre is okay. But that was a fucking uh, bridge too far for these guys, right? Um, and... The uh, uh, Xbox put the game out and they let you do the mini game, right? So it's just, it's so inconsistent that if you're a developer, let me tell you something. You guys know I do work with uh, movie games, right? Movie games has a wonderful game. It's the way I came to their attention and they came to mine uh, called Lust from Beyond, okay? Lust from Beyond is a, when you play it on the PC, with the non-rated edition, it is a really fun, interesting survival horror game that is also super fucking X rated and X rated from a standpoint of, they show pretty much all nudity, but it's also, you know, uh, it's also like, you know, there are scenes where like conjoined twins are fucking this girl and they're, you know, it, it's fucking weird. The whole thing, not that that would be weird, but that would be fucking weird. Um, in that game from movie games, I didn't do a lot of work on the M edition, but I went through some of the notes and talked to him a little bit and they submitted a game. It got an M and they wanted to put um, the game on Xbox and Sony. And I think they even spoke with Xbox and Sony, like their, whatever their, their, their person they interface with and everybody was moving along and moving along. And then suddenly we finished it. And both 
Sony and Xbox were like, yeah, yeah, we're not going to put that out. Even though all the stuff that movie games did to make it acceptable um, uh, didn't matter. So I, it's not a big deal for me because I can play games anywhere. It sucks for the developer. The guys at Puppet Combo said, you know, we spent a lot of time making a Switch version uh, of, of Christmas Massacre. And now we just got to throw all that shit away uh, because they won't, they won't um, fucking carry it, man. Um, Mutant Mo says, as it relates to uh, uh, Lust from Beyond, there's people in that game shitting on each other in a dungeon orgy. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, that's not in the M. That's not in the M. Google says Lust from Beyond is available on PS4. Uh, I checked. I didn't see that at all. Go to the PlayStation Store um, and see if you can find it. It was about to launch. The game was done. So maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I'm not wrong about Martha is Dead, and I'm not wrong about this game, but maybe I'm wrong about uh, this coming out as an M title, but I'm almost certain it did not. Um, let me check one... Let me check one moment real quick. Uh, Less from Beyond. Oops. Okay. M rated um, PS4. Let's see what it says. Uh, okay. So let's go. I don't want to go there. I want to go to the store to buy it because I can't find it in the store. Um, yeah. They even have trophies for it, but I don't think it ever actually, uh, it never came out. I'm almost certain I'm right. Let me know. Um, a cab says when your Christmas tree starts talking to you, uh, you know, something's up before we get, uh, to, uh, this story. I, I'm really excited to share with you. I do want to tell you, uh, yeah, th this guy goes crazy and his Christmas tree starts telling him to kill people, blah, blah, blah. It's cool. It's a great game. Uh, but, um, as an aside, when I was a kid, uh, I went with my dad and my brother to a department store. It was called Pizzitz in Birmingham, Alabama. And they had a, I was like six, right? So it was in the seventies. They had snow and little woodland creature animatronics, blah, blah, blah. And at the end, they had the talking Christmas tree, right? Which was just basically a Christmas tree with an animatronic mouth. And there was a woman uh, behind the, you know, fence or something, um, that was talking to people. Now I didn't know this, uh, at all, but that's kind of what the tech was posits. I mean, I'll show you a picture though. It's terrifying in the newspaper posits. I think you can still see it. Um, yeah, here she is. Look at her. Look at that. It's really tiny. You can barely see it, but, uh, let me zoom in for you, right? That's her. That's the talking Christmas tree, the enchanted forest, and you can't see it that well. It's only a tiny image, but it was fucking weird. Okay. And so me and my brother pick up some of the fake snow and we throw it at the talking Christmas tree because we're like, fuck her. She's weird. Um, and our dad made us go back and apologize to this stupid fucking talking Christmas tree. That's got nothing to do with games, but I just wanted to share it with you. Um, hey, listen, Big Afro Man has not only given away a membership to the Diet Soda Soldiers, which I very much appreciate. Thank you, sir. He also dropped some big ducats and says, Jaffe, uh, Xbox is weird because I see articles saying they're doomed because console sales are down. But then the article says Xbox profits are up and doing good. So which is it? What do you think? Well, okay. My understanding, and again, thank you for that super chat very much. Uh, my understanding uh, is that they are, um, making profit off of game pass as a subscription service, whether that's because the number of people, even though it's not as much anywhere close as Sony as PlayStation, most people who own one are giving them anywhere from 14 to 20 bucks a month. Also, they have the PC. Also, in much probably less than 1%, they have Samsung TVs. You can play it on the phone. You can play it on your tablet. And, you know, that they've even said uh, in the lawsuit, Phil Spencer, I believe, was on the stand and he said, and I don't know if this was just performative or what, but he says, look, if we can't get above 
um, a certain percentage of Game Pass consumers not on the console, by 2027, we may exit the gaming space. Got a lot of news over the summer when he said it. So it's clear their North Star has nothing to do with hardware and everything to do with, you know, service-based uh, or subscription-based. But that's probably why, if you look at the sales numbers from Xbox and they say they're actually doing, they're not doing great in terms of, you know, Game Pass is not like 100 million subscribers, um, but there, this quarter was better for that division, that service part or that subscription part. But the hardware, yeah, is absolutely down. Brent Williams has stepped up and said, yippee ki you piece of shit. I will kill you. He didn't say anything like that, Jaffe. I know. I know. Brent Williams. Thank you so much, buddy, for becoming a new member here at the Gavin and games. I appreciate that, buddy. It's very generous and it's very courteous and kind uh, of you. Thank you for joining our merry band of fuck sticks, Brett Williams. Sooner than later, I will have my, uh, my computer back and I'll be able to play you some shit like, Oh no, you're see, look at it. It's so tiny up there. I'll see. Let's see. What, uh, where is it? Yeah, see the Diet Coke? It doesn't work. But I'll figure it out. Anyway, point is, Brett Williams, thank you, buddy. It's good to have you here, as always, as part of our little community. Um, okay. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. Um, what do we got? What do we got coming up next, boys? And ladies. And ladies. Come on now. <gasps> I want to tell you about this game. Hang on. Listen to this. Did you hear this news story? This is this is wild. Konami had a game. Um, thank you, Rath. Good to see you, buddy. Konami had a game for the NES. It was called Battle Choice. Did you see this news story? This is really interesting. Um, and it was mostly finished, and they had they had the the ROMs, it was burn the ROMs into the cart and all this shit. And somewhere at some point, they canceled it. They killed it, right? And it kind of went away. No one ever really talked about it, saw it, knew about it. Um, well, it suddenly bubbled back up to the awareness of people. I'll tell you about the game, tell you what it is in a second. And um, it appeared at an auction, right? And so you go, oh, great. Well, now we can play it. We can see it. Somebody can emulate it, whatever. And then I know this guy spent $16,000 on this game. Look at this thing. They spent $16,000 uh, to buy this. And then they immediately went away. They didn't publish anything about it. They're not putting it up on the internet. They're just putting it in their private collection. It was on a Yahoo Japanese auction site. Um, it marks the first time anyone who wasn't working has ever seen a screenshot of the game. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, uh, the high bidder wasn't working with Video Game History Foundation in terms of, because the Video Game History Foundation tried to win, but they were the runner up for the bid. This guy, whoever paid 16K got it. Um, and so it's not going to like a preservation society. Um, but this guy's just taking it in and, uh, you know, hiding it away. But let me show you what the game is. It's kind of cool. It's uh, it's basically, it's kind of like chess, um, on the outside, right? But then when a piece attacks another piece, and they were kind of saying in the article, it's like Archon from EA. I don't remember Archon being this way. I don't remember there being gameplay. I thought it was just little animation. But anyway, when my piece attacks your piece, it literally goes into a very simple punch kick fighting game. And so you've got, you know, like the king and the pawn uh, and the, the characters are warriors from all different history periods. So you've got the king and the pawn fighting um, in that one. Here you've got, uh, you've got a halfling and a chimera. Um, and again, depending on whoever uh, wins this battle gets the uh, spot on the board. And I'm assuming, depending on what piece you're playing, your abilities in that fighting game limited as I'm sure they are 
uh, are tied to the piece. So if you are playing the knight or something like that, you'll have a very different ability in the fighting game than if you're just playing a pawn. I think it sounds like a lot of fun. Um, Uncle Fusnet says Archon was just like this. You had little battle mini game every time your pieces met. Yeah, but here, let's look at it real quick. Archon. Um, Archon EA chess. Let me zoom out. Uh, you had that, but I don't remember it being like a fighting game. Uh, I remember it being, let's see. So am I spelling it right? Archon? Anyway, let's see. It's 16,000 bucks. Yeah, here it is. So when your pieces in this game would meet on the board, I don't remember it going to like a side scrolling fighting experience. Um, but you're saying it was a real time battle. I should look it up again. I, I remember playing it. I don't remember that, but I think it's really cool. And Konami put it away and somebody showed up and said, here, $16,000, give it to me, you fucker. Um, I wonder if they get the intellectual property with it. I mean, I'm sure it was an illegal, I'm sure Konami didn't say, Hey, yeah, no problem, man. Sell our IP. Like I have a, I had some guy reach out to me. I have a disc of twisted metal one, uh, from E3. There we go. There we go. I have the very first uh, disc and it has uh, the suburb level uh, or, or sorry, the city level as the massive level before we chopped it up. It also has the network cable so you can fight with somebody else who has uh, the link cable so you can fight two on one on one and all that shit. And the guys offered me a shit ton of money for it. And I'm like, I, it's not mine to sell. Um, it is. Um, it's Sony's. I don't think it's legal for me to sell this fucking thing. Um, so, you know, it's, it just sits in a drawer somewhere, but you know, there we go. Um, okay. Um, here's what we're going to do. Uh, let me, I want to do a real quick test. So here, this is the part of the show. I'm going to go over to, um, the discord and I am going to, um, bring on cult calypso members and god of war members and mods and in that we are going to talk about the last of us uh remake part two uh and a couple other gaming uh pieces of news but i i just want to make sure this is going to work because the audio on this stream yard is is kind of weird uh let me see give me a second fellas um Okay, so if I go, let me go to, I'm over on the Discord. Oh, you probably can't even hear me. Can you guys hear me when I went over there? Um, I'm not bringing back After Party. I'm bringing back um, sort of the, the, the roundtable discussion at the end of the show about a couple of things, but it's still part of the same stream. But I'll t I, I, you know what? I'm going to have to save that until I get Discord up and running. Uh, not Discord, until I get uh, my new computer back, hopefully in a couple of days, because I, I can't do it with this fucking Mac. It's very confusing. So let's just jump into it, and let's talk about The Last of Us Part Two. okay? Hello, uh, Power Lad. Good to see you, buddy. Um, so this game... Everybody knows this was announced a couple of days ago. Um, Naughty Dog's putting this out, I think, in January 19th. Uh, if you already own it, it'll cause you it'll cost you 10 bucks. Uh, obviously, updated graphics, uh, new costumes for the characters. My understanding is there's also going to be a couple of new sections of of the game like locations you can go to and then they're going to have it looks like it's a single player version called no return which is a roguelike mode uh you can choose from a number of characters this is all from GameSpot. uh some of who have never been playable in the series as they try to survive as long as they can through a series of randomized encounters enemy characters will possess their own unique traits and modes include boss battles too Lost levels let players experience parts of the game as early development versions that were cut, while new developer commentary can be activated if you want insights into the experience. So there, there's actually some good stuff here. I know a lot of people were upset. Um, 
but a Druckmann came out and said, whether it's true or not, who knows, but he said, I'm not, I'm not saying he has a tendency to lie. I'm just saying it, it's PR. So who the fuck knows? But he's like, look, this is what we put the new people on. Um, we're working on a new game. Uh, so in that sense, uh, that kind of calmed those nerves. Like Jesus fucking Christ guys, when are we going to get a new naughty dog game? Um, and then they came out and said, Hey, it's 10 bucks. So if you already own it. And so, I mean, when you think about that 10 bucks and you get all that content, the new mode, better graphics, and I'm excited because I love the last of us two, but I never finished it because when I went over to be Abby, the pacing where I, I, I built all my shit as, as Ellie and I, I just was crafting everything and I was exploring everywhere because I didn't want to miss anything. And then the minute I get to, um, Abby and all that gets taken away. I'm just like, Oh God. And it just took the wind out of my fucking sails. I, I think it was a mistake, frankly, at a design level, not to put Abby in there, but to do that to the player. But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, but I will be getting it cause I do want to finish it now. I'm very much, uh, uh, excited for it. Yeah. Miscellaneous game says, are you going to play through the Abby chapters? Uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to try to finish it. Absolutely. Um, and in fact, I may have to buy it because if I remember correctly, uh, I think I may have lost or broke my actual copy. I might have a digital copy. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, Wayne B says the game in that good, not worth 10 bucks for me. It's certainly not the kind of game. If you're into sort of more heavy gamey games, like fighting games or stuff, but as a cinematic action adventure game, I think it's, uh, you know, I don't know it's a lot of good. It's, it's really, it's really good. And I did not like the first last of us at all but I loved the second one. So, you know, Eric didn't like it at all. He says it was a dreadful story. Um, so your mileage will vary, but I, I, I think it's, it, it's cool for sure. Uh, I'm very excited to see what happens with Sony Santa Monica's uh, DLC. They're talking about uh, for Ragnarok though. That's what I want to also get my hands on. Um, and maybe, right. What do we got? Keely's things coming up in like three weeks. I bet we'll see some Sony uh, uh, shit, right? I bet we'll see some Sony trailers. We have to. We have to see something. Uh, Kyler says, really, I thought Last of Us 1 was great. So, yeah, I mean, most people do. I'm, I'm in the minority there. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we see the Santa Monica thing, or I'm hoping we see uh, maybe a tease of Ghost Tsushima, uh, something something new from the Sony folks. You know what I was thinking about though? Uh, if, if, if think, I, I have no information, I'm just fucking sharing thoughts, fellas. Dizzy death says probably Wolverine. I heard that's 2025 now. So maybe not so much, uh, but possibly. Um, so this is me just thinking out loud. I was, I, I think I might've been listening to the, the last Stan media fellows. Uh, but somebody was talking about Bungie and if Bungie at the time anyway, had the power to shut down a game like factions, um, then really no one. And, and if Connie gets pushed out of the company as she was, no one's safe. And I wonder now, I wonder like, about Corey. Like I haven't talked to Corey in ages. I don't know what he's working on. I, I know nothing. Um, but I wonder now, I wonder if he's sitting around going, I don't know about this. You know, I, uh, you know, are, is he in full production with this thing and it's already been greenlit? Um, it's weird. We haven't heard anything, uh, about what it is or how far along it is in development. And so, I don't know. I have no evidence of this. I am not saying Corey Barlog is leaving Sony. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I would be surprised to hear if because of all this shit and given how talented he is, he hasn't thought about it as it relates to going, you know, I, I need to go somewhere that I can, you know, make what I want to make. And these, this pressure now of, you know, whatever, unless whoever's taking over Sony has said, no, we want to go back and do what we've always done. So great. We don't, you know, I, I, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. Um, did Corey share any updated God of war 2018, uh, announcement? He didn't share anything, but I knew what was going on and I'm not like 
I, I'm I'm still in the loop with those people that let me know that there was a God of War going on. So it, it, it and I wouldn't, let's just put it this way. If I knew, and I'm not saying there's not, but if I knew there was a game being made that he's working on that's in full on production, um, I wouldn't be saying anything because it's not my place to spoil anything. But what I'm telling you, I haven't heard a thing about it, uh, which doesn't mean anything. I'm just saying as it relates to all the upheaval that's going on, it wouldn't surprise me. Like Nodog says, I wouldn't be shocked. Right. That's right. Um, you think Sony will change how quiet they are with a new CEO? I, I have no idea, man. I have no idea what these guys are looking to achieve uh, at this point uh, with the uh, with, with with all of these changes happening. I have absolutely no idea. Um, you know, uh, so maybe or maybe they'll go. What? It's not. What's the point? Did you see our sales figures? We don't need to not be quiet. Um, it's not, it's not hurting that we're quiet. People are still buying in droves. So, you know, Kyler says, what about the next media molecule game? I know nothing. I mean, I know they're doing something, but I also know a lot of their key people have walked away. Um, and, uh, who they're left with. I have to imagine Sony is saying to them, we need something more commercial from you guys. We need something that's not so arty farty that it, 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 it weighs in the arty farty more than something that's also going to fly off the shelves. Maybe they're going to go back to little big planet. I have no idea, but we do know they're working on something. Um, did Corey and I get along? Yeah, absolutely got along. I think Corey and I, you know, I mean, at a creative level, not, at, not like at a go out to a nightclub level, we were both pretty alpha in our careers and wanting to have the say and all that. So we certainly teased each other and butted heads, but I, I had and have a great deal of respect for him. Uh, and I certainly like him, but we never like hung out or anything. Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I had small kids and I wasn't much of a social teammate outside of work anyway. Um, uh, you ordered a copy, Brett Moore of Wolverine origins, on 360 to play on the series X. I would love to do the same thing. What did it cost you to get that? Um, Star Wars needs a lot of work says Austin. This is the last, this isn't video game news. So I put it at the end, but did you guys see this, that uh, Kathy Kennedy is still in charge, but uh, Dave Filoni of clone wars and then a Mandalorian and a lot of other things that he's contributed to uh, is now the chief creative officer of Lucasfilm. So, you know, we'll see. I don't care. I mean, any star Wars, uh, uh, is like pizza to me. You know, it's, it's and star Wars. I don't have to love everything they do, but it would be nice to get excited about star Wars again, or a certain star Wars movie again. Um, Barlog and alpha L O A L says CR 3d. Once again, CR 3d, it shows your listing comprehension. I didn't say he was an alpha, like a, uh, go out and, you know, uh, get the ladies and beat up the bad guys at the club. I mean, as it relates to his career and his, uh, his, his creative passions and his willingness to fight for his creative passions. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not even talking about, that's exactly what I said. You just chose not to hear it. So fuck you. Um, all right. That's all I got. What do you guys want to talk about for a few minutes before I head off into the sunset? Uh, any news, anything you want to talk about, any topic is not off the table. It's really whatever you'd like to discuss. Johnny says the problem with dreams was not that it was already farty. It was just too complicated for the layman and they couldn't simplify or add a proper way to teach the player. I mean, overall, they, they seem like whether it's that or tear away, they seemed to have a tendency to, go to think sales second product first. Um, and in that I, you know, I just think that that didn't suit them. Well, I agree with you though. Dreams could have been Roblox. Uh, dreams could have been this billion dollar business nestled within PlayStation. Um, but everything from what you're saying, the controls, uh, to the lack of monetization, 
to only being able to play those games on a PlayStation. It, it, anybody really serious about doing creative work would have easily moved over to Unity or uh, Roblox where they could monetize or Fortnite, uh, especially now with Unreal 5 Creator. They just really dropped that fucking ball. And I don't know where that came from. I don't know if Jim Ryan was saying, no, I want to sell consoles. I don't want anything on PC. I have no idea. But you can't tell me they didn't think about it. Um, you know, of course, somebody in that studio or somebody within Sony would, was saying this stuff. But I don't know why. Whatever one out, one out. But it was a mistake, in my opinion. Um, okay. Um, Eric says, Sony needs another showcase. What the hell they got for 2024? Do they need another showcase or would you like another showcase? I would like another showcase. But I don't think they need one. Are you kidding? They're doing great. Um, but if I was a PlayStation owner, like if you go to the PlayStation site, right? I mean, you want to be excited by what's coming, right? If you go to PlayStation, say, .com, is that what it is? Uh and it's like, oh, I'm thinking about getting a PlayStation. This is exciting. And you go to games for PS5. What's what's what? What do you got coming? What do you got coming? Uh, Spider-Man Two, whatever. We know that Ragnarok's out. All these fucking games are old. Um, let's do coming soon. Uh, Warfare's already out. People don't like it for the most part. Some people do. Uh, Final Fantasy, Avatar. I mean, again, if you are not, if you're looking for exclusives, the roadmap, like you say, is uh, is pretty fucking fuzzy. If you're looking for just like, hey, is there a lot of shit I can play on the PS5 and I'm not thinking about whether it's exclusive or not? Oh, yeah, it's excellent. But in terms of like, why buy this versus a computer or a Switch or an Xbox? I mean, there's nothing, there, you know, uh, Final Fantasy Rebirth, that's not what it was. Uh, I still don't really know if Rise of the Ronin, which is third party, is worth getting excited about. Uh, Helldivers looks like fun, but I don't think it's a. it moves the needle one way or another. Um, you know, did they say Silent Hill 2 is exclusive or no? That's going to be on Xbox and Switch and everything. But yeah, first party is uh, pretty barren. But hey, if you saw the Matt Booty stuff we talked about at the top of the show... Xbox first party is, is pretty fucking barren too. Um, I, I just, I, for the life of me can't understand what the fuck. I mean, e even it, 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 again, I don't know. No. Cause even if they're not worried about hardware, if they're just worried about sub numbers at this point, Xbox go out and get a third party exclusive for the love of God, man, get something. Uh, I mean, Sony, I would say the same, but we know that when Sony's games, they come out, they'll be great. At least if you like their kind of games, but with Xbox Towerborn ain't going to cut it. And that, whatever that thing booty was talking about, um, uh, this fucking thing, uh, era history untold is not going to cut it for most people. Um, stalker. I don't think they've given a new date eclipse zips for, and I also don't think we've heard anything about, uh, uh, what's the RPG, the first person RPG um, uh, coming from uh, Obsidian? I don't think we've heard if that's definitely, uh, you know, uh, coming this year either. Uh, Few B, I don't agree that it feels like an insult. Towerborn feels like a deliberate insult to Xbox fans. I I, I don't think it's going to be, I, I, I'm trying to remember who the developers are, but they're not a bad group of developers at all. Um, I'm sure it'll be a decent, solid game. I just don't think it's, you look at it and you go, okay, that looks like, you know, a five man team made it and it's, you know, 20 bucks on steam and it's day one game pass. It doesn't go, you don't go, Whoa, this is an exciting console. Silent Hill two is not a Kojima game. No. Um, the bias in your chat and you still don't think it's real says bass. Digi. what bias would it be specific? I hate comments like that, Bass Digi. I love you, but I hate comments like that. What am I supposed to do with that? Give me an example. So plays Avowed. Yes, we're talking about Avowed is, is that game, but I don't know when it's uh, coming out. The trailer didn't wow anyone, says Fupi. Yeah, that was fine. 
Um, yeah, Mute Mo, a new Doom game, right? Give us something. Love of God. Give us something. Um, a Valorant is probably late 2024 at best. Yeah, I mean, just, just, you have all the money in the world, Microsoft. Just go fucking get something. Get something to a fucking uh, third party publisher for the love of fucking God, man. Um, until you get your shit firing on all cylinders. But Jesus, it's, 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 it's embarrassing. Ah, oh, well. That's why I game on PC. And even if I don't game on PC, uh, I uh, I game on console, but I still peruse the indie parts. Eternal. God, there's so many games. What was Eternal? Oh, Doom Eternal. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Wavemaster says, I'm interested in Clockwork Revolution. Sure. I am too from the trailer, but there's really nothing else um, they've shown. Uh, and the trailer didn't really tell us what kind of game it was, but visually I liked it. Um, where did the God of War wannabe game go where you're the black chick with the ax? I don't know what you're talking about. Is that the Suna Sacrifice game? I have no idea um, what you're talking about. All right, fellas. Well, there you go. That has been Gabin and Games for uh, the 21st or 2nd. I don't know what it is. Some day. Hang on. Let me ask my phone. It's uh, 21st November. Uh, new members, thank you for being here with us today. Old members, thank you for being here. Everybody in between. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you hanging out and talking games with us. Uh, lurkers, I get it. Oh, I get it. I get it. It's weird to talk to people on streams. So if you're watching and you're a long time lurker, uh, uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it uh, very, very much. Um, hey, Bass Digi, I'm just asking for specifics, man. Give me specifics. And, and again, I don't care if the chat is biased. What I'm telling you is you have to provide evidence that the people who nominate these games. I mean, what's funny, real quick, what's funny is that you guys, it's staggering to me because you don't really care, some of you. If you really, because because you will throw a hissy fit going, there's an Xbox tax. Or you will throw a hissy fit going, um, the reason there is no Hogwarts legacy nominated is woke stuff because of JK Rowling and you'll die on that Hill. But when I tell you from firsthand knowledge as a guy who's been on these fucking panels and who has been on the nominating committees and has voted in these things ad nauseum that most of the people don't play most of the games, but they still vote. You would think that would be your first battle you want to fight, right? Because there's evidence of that. You can go to some of the voters and look at their history of what they've played and go, that's how are you making a choice about best art direction? Two of those games that you, that are up for best art, you didn't even play. Um, so that's a real thing. But no one cares about that. Um, make a good argument why Hogwarts wasn't nominated. Well, it's not my, it's, it's your job to prove your theory. Uh, you know, my take on it is it's sitting in an 84 on Metacritic, which doesn't, um, uh, do we have any mods in here today? Can we get rid of Bass Digi? Can somebody ban that fucker? Um, I could do it, but I'm not on my computer. Maybe I can ban them. Let me see. Hang on. Uh, yeah, there you go. You're you're done. Hey, you're done. Wind it up, Girl Scout. Um, so the reviews don't matter necessarily, although they matter um, in terms of th there is a correlation there. But um you know, what do you want it to be nominated for? It, it, it seemed like a really good open world game. Um, 
what's you know what what do you what do you think how did it get snubbed because why what do you think um yeah i get it ghost yushima was an 83 and was nominated like i said the number doesn't mean it, it, it's not a hundred percent like if it gets this score it has to be nominated i get it um and the year matters what games were up matter um but you know, in this, in this case though, for whatever the reason, it was a really, you know, bellwether year for games, quality games. Um, and perhaps that's the reason, um, that it just wasn't, you know, in fact, uh, in the chat tone says 84 is a bit on the high side. It was okay, but didn't do anything special, but let's, let's, let's even go to where you want to go. Let's assume the people who nominated these games um, didn't even consider it. And let's assume it's because the journalists on these committees got together. Seriously, I want you to follow me uh, here for a minute. Um, let's assume they got together on a, a private chat and said, let's fuck that game because even though the developers had nothing to do with the anti-trans stuff and the developers actually allowed you to create trans characters in the game and all that, let's fuck that game at the awards such as it is the things the best selling game of the year. One of them, uh, because of JK Rowling's idiotic views, which I think are idiotic of the trans community. Um, so what? So, because, because at that point you're acting like you're acting like how dare the game awards uh, go into this position of not being this authentic thing that is a genuine celebration of the motherfuckers. I've been telling you, most people don't even fucking play the fucking games all the way through or at all. You don't have to prove you've played to vote. You don't have to prove you've completed X percent of a game to nominate. So, the idea that you're choosing to fight the battle of, but they could have gotten together because they thought it was, she wasn't woke and they fucked. Yeah, maybe, but you're not talking about an institute. It's not like the Supreme court that we thought was at least fairish. And then we learned all this crap in the last couple of years. Did you ever walk around thinking that, that, that this was as valid an award ceremony as the, the, the fucking, you know, Nobel, uh, or uh, uh, what do you get for science? What do you get when you win uh, the, the the big science award? Come on now. Um, uh, it's crazy, man. It's crazy, man. Uh, Eric says all of the industry is hyper liberal. They don't need a secret meeting to not vote for it. Cool. Who cares? Great. Have uh, Tucker Carlson do his own video game. Uh, it's not the Nobel Peace Prize. It's the it's it's what you get for science. Uh, I forget what it's called. Um, understood, says PM. But it makes the awards a joke and only useful for new game trailers, right? Yes, they are a joke. I don't mean the production is a joke. Keely does a great job. He puts on a great show. But if are you, what do you what do you think these are? What, you really think this has been, you know, uh, passed over with a fine tooth comb and it's, it's, it's been triple checked by all sorts of outside sources to make sure that it exists in a vacuum and it's airtight and nothing can, uh, uh, corrupt the voting process. Come on, come on. I think, uh, that's crazy. I think that's crazy. Uh, but yes, there's a lot of liberal people in games. There's a lot of liberal people in entertainment. Good. I'm a liberal person. I'm a progressive person. Great. I like woke stuff. I respect that you don't. Then don't buy it or do buy it and support it. But, you know, it's kind of like asking, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the Republican Party in America, you know, why, why, you know, or, or them asking why are liberals voting for Biden? It's like, cause they're liberals. This is not a, you know, uh, okay. Anyway, there we go. I don't care about the awards says reformed. I just watch for the trailers. I think that's most people. I enjoy the awards because I enjoy, uh, discussing games in a, 
you know, with a spotlight on which did really good stuff this week, um, or th this year, but I don't think they, I know I got, I've gotten awards. I gave them away. They mean nothing. Um, Jamie says I'm a liberal too, but I don't think it's a good idea for people to cut this, to get the shit cut off. Well, again, it's all, you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what to tell you because it's like, it's an, it's an, you know, if you really care about it being a valid award show, fine, but they're people and they're going to vote. If you really just want to go, look, I'll show you here. It is right now. If you really want to know which games of the year connected and moved and affected the most people, I can give you that right now. You don't even have to tune into the show. Um, and I'll give it to you right here, right in front of you. Here you go. Year to date, the number one selling game so far this year is Hogwarts Legacy. So there you go. The buyers have spoken. The buyers have spoken and they've said that is the one that we bought and bought and bought and bought. Um, so embrace it. Be grateful. That's that's the only thing that really, I mean, what do you, what else, you want some fucking stupid award from a bunch of people that you say are liberal anyway? Um, Legend of Zelda is number two right? Diablo, a lot of people say is their favorite game of the year. That's in there. Um, so be happy, right? You didn't have a bunch of liberal people voting for uh, a game that was, you know, the IP was created by a total bigot. I want that. Come on now. Um, all right, fellas, that's it. Be welcome. Be welcome. Be well. Thank you for hanging out and talking games. I will see you on the next show, which I think it's tomorrow. We're going to do something tomorrow at 2.30. I don't know what it is yet. Maybe it's a game stream. Uh, maybe it's gameplay. I don't know. Or maybe it's Gavin and Games. But I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great rest of your afternoon, your evening. And thanks for hanging out, fellas. Mods, thank you very much. I will see you soon. Bye, everybody. Yeep. This is the time for the song. <clears throat> And the song is about things. And the reason I'm singing the song is we can't do the round table, Hangry Dad, today because I can't get it to work on a Mac. As soon as my PC comes back, we're gonna do that. My bad. Uh uh holiday stream mute mo yes we're definitely going to be streaming something in the morning of Thanksgiving, 100 percent I don't know if it's a proper Thanksgiving Day special or if it's just Let's play some stupid fucking games. I have no idea, but I, I, we will be doing something. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to sing uh, you a song now. I'm going to, we're going to have Sting play us out. <clears throat> I knew a guy named Mutant Mo. He had a day one patch kid on his toe. He stuck that toe inside a lady's bum and the day one patch kid started to hmm i don't know what i could be hmm see you fellas bye everyone <laughs>